Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm playing a tank that everybody should consider unchecking accelerated crew training on and grinding exactly 13,550 experience if of course you want to be able to get ready for the Japanese tank destroyers in the next patch. But also in today's video I'm going to be letting you know why you might not just want to be playing this tank because of the opportunity to get the new Japanese tank destroyer line. And that is because the Chihi is possibly one of the most outrageous tier fours I've played in a long while. Now, when people think about tier four seal clubbers, they think about tanks like either the B1, the Panzer B2 740, they think about the Matilda, they think about the T28 at long range with the 57 millimeter, they think about the Hetzer. There's a whole wide range of incredible tanks at tier four that you can play to be able to give yourself all of that seal clubber goodness that people enjoy. However, I'm going to be pitching why I think that the Chi He is possibly one of the most outrageous and sleeper OP tanks inside the game. Firstly, this vehicle has great damage per minute. We're talking about 1,875 damage per minute with this vehicle also having great penetration of 87 on its standard rounds and 131 on its premium rounds, of which you're going to see me fire quite a lot of inside this game. Because I wanted to get as much experience as I possibly can on this vehicle. And when your team has already managed to lose pretty much a third of their hit points and also down three tanks, you're going to have to do everything that you can to be able to give your team any kind of advantage they can. Right? Any, any kind of advantage they can get. And that is a great start there. A Panzer B2, which is a tier 4 tank with super preferential matchmaking, which means that it never has to meet any tier 5 tanks, let alone any tier 6 tanks. Vanquished from the enemy team. And look at this thing. The most outrageous aspect of this vehicle that I did not appreciate until I played this game is that it's also got 15 degrees of gun depression. And so in a scenario like this, where gun depression is king, you can just work ridge lines and get such funky shots at your opponents that they do not expect. 15 degrees is utterly outrageous. Tanks like the Kranvang or the Comet have 12. This has three extra degrees. The difference between, say, a Progetto 65 or an M48A5 Patton, which has 9 degrees of gun depression, and the Kranvang, which is 12, that's the kind of difference you get from going from the Kranvang, which is already excellent, to the Chi E. And so this vehicle really has everything that an experienced player needs to be able to deal with copious amounts of puppies at low tier. Outrageous damage per minute, so you can put multiple shots in and overwhelm them. Because quite enough, uh, quite often at low tier, it is not enough to just be able to take out one or even two tanks. Sometimes you need to take out multiple enemy vehicles in quick succession. And because Wargaming have increased the hit points that all of the low tier tanks have several years ago, you really need a different kind of seal clubber. Either something that can just bounce all of the rounds that the enemy fire, or alternatively something that can just have overwhelming firepower to be able to deal with whatever's in front of it. And look at this rate of fire, man. Sure, the alpha damage is only 75. Still not bad for tier 4. But that rate of fire is absolutely amazing. You've kind of got damage per minute that are on some of the lower end tier 9 uh, vehicles and even uh, maybe a tank like the Renocerante, which is currently top of the tree and I'm going to be featuring in the Tank Tree Showcase later on on Twitch, is has got about the same kind of damage per minute as this vehicle. That's terrifying considering that the tank has 540 hit points, which is about a quarter of what the Renocerante will be backing. And so when you get a Sariano in this situation, it's more of a, a Sayonara in this, in this scenario. Hopefully as they come around the corner and we pick up the kill. So we're up to 1,400 damage so far. That's enough to pretty much deal uh, about uh, three tanks worth of damage. And when you take a look at the hit bars at the top of the screen, this is 1,000. So 1,500 is pretty much that. But we've got a lot more to do. The M1542 comes around the corner. Ricochets their first shell off me. Pens their second, unfortunately, as they're starting to aim a little bit better. But in this situation, I feel like I've just got to go. The Samoa S35 fires an HE shell at me, that little tier 3 premium tank. And then we manage to put our damage total up to nearly 2,000 now. Over 2,000 with that shot into the Samoa S35. And wow, 15 degrees of gun depression. All of this rate of fire. And even though we have done 2,000 damage, 
which again, if we look at the enemy's health bar, is that and then another one on top, it is still not enough to win this battle. And we have the SU-76GFT on our team saying, Lost TY, idiots, you cannot win lane one. I'm trying my best, cannon fodder. Maybe if you were still alive, you could have been um, helping in being able to, uh, to win lane one, as you call it. Okay, and so in this scenario, it's really important that you don't allow your opponents to be able to surround you. You can see the Panzer IV D on the enemy team has six kills. Wow, they got a top gun. They've also been invited to a platoon by the Sariano, I guess, just now. Maybe they thought that they could mop us up and be able to get 10 kills between us, uh, between them, which isn't going to give them a battle hero medal, but maybe it'll make them feel good. So the Panzer IV D is going to continue to chase me, but I can't really focus on the Panzer IV D right now, as I need to take out the Tier 3 Seal Club of Delight in the form of the FCM 36 Pack 40. So now we've changed our 2 versus 5 scenario into a 1 versus 4 with... Unfortunately, Uncle Scrubby Baby here having only 152 hit points against nearly 500 on the enemy team. But there we go, the battle of the top gun. Down goes the Panzer IV D. Maybe a little bit overconfident in that scenario. I uh, hate to feed you a loss here, mate, but I'm also going to try my darndest. Because, you know, when you've got to get 13,550 experience before the next patch, every little puppy helps in this scenario. Listen to me, sounding like Cruella de Vil at the end of the game here. And yet yeah, you, you kind of do when you're starting to make this huge code out of all of these Dalmatians of the enemy team. 15 degrees of gun depression. If you can become Obi-Wan in that scenario, then you can you can create a lot of Anakins as the M3 steward on the enemy team just managed to find out. And in this scenario, it's about being aggressive and trying to deal with each tank one by one by one rather than allowing them to mass up and go at you together. Having dealt with two of the four vehicles remaining on the enemy team, now we're going to be going after the Samoa S35. We put one round into them. Are we going to go up for a second? We are. And the shell kind of looks like it missed. Was that like a reverse ghost shell? Oh well, I'm not complaining. I'm going to take it. And unfortunately, the Stug on the enemy team is still very healthy, and they've picked up a kill, which means that it's not very likely that they're AFK. Although, considering their last spotted location, they could pretty much be anywhere. You see that I'm rocking backwards and forwards on the ridge line there, probably trying to find a, a, a place to put the adrenaline in that scenario. The Stug doesn't come around the corner, but we are now going to have a very awkward scenario of having binoculars, which are great for when you want to sit still and extend your view range, but not so great for when you want to try and dig out sneaky German tank destroyers in the latter part of the game. So in this situation, it's about going into bushes, activating the binoculars, Seeing if we can manage to catch a bit of view range, you can see that I realized I got into the bush and spot them. Wow, look at this graveyard that we created here. Up to six kills now. So we have effectively not really taken the top gun away from Sh Shikinkian on the enemy team because multiple players can get top guns. But we are three out of the four steps closer towards handing them a defeat. And boy, you don't want to have a defeat after you've managed to destroy six tanks, right? But yeah, Uncle Quickie Baby is on the case here. Alright, so up to 2,400 damage in addition to that top gun. We're just checking our corners, activating our binoculars, and being methodical with the way that we're trying to find the Stug. The best thing that could happen right now is obviously for the Stug to be AFK. But the second best thing for the, right now would be if the Stug was to go and cap. Because if they started to cap, I would work my way back towards the cap circle. I would probably go along the 4-5 the line as I think it'll be faster. And if you're wondering why I'm firing there, I'm firing because I want to lower my camera rating. The Stug doesn't have very good view range. But if I fire and I get spotted as I pull back down the, the ridge line, then that gives me a better idea of where the Stug is. And so by firing and lowering my camera rating, you can have an inkling of where the enemy team may or may not be. So we activate our binoculars, don't spot anything once again. Looking towards the bush, those bushes on the side, because that might be the possible situation as to where the Stug would be defending the cap circle. And in this scenario, you don't really want to go into the cap circle until you have to. I think in this situation, it's best to spend as much time as you can, or as time as you have, if you know you can get back towards the cap circle, trying to get information on the enemy tank, or trying to figure out the different lines that they could be, and trying to spot them and to get them into a fair fight like that because as soon as you go into the cap circle unless you're playing against a bot or a complete potato they're going to make their way back towards the base knowing exactly where you are 
and then they're going to be able to dictate where the engagement happens. So capping is what you want to do if you're against a slow tank or if you're against somebody who a large number of enemy vehicles or if you want to force the enemy to come to you. So we're going to come around the corner slowly because this is roughly where the Stug was last spotted. We don't manage to find them. Really dodgy stuff here because I'm going to die in two shots to the Stug if we manage to uh, to get caught by them with their vision. So I'm thinking about firing a shot here or just activating my binoculars. Maybe they will help me to be able to see into the bush. And oh, he's right here and the Stug is caught. Is he AFK? Is the Stug AFK in this scenario? He hasn't even seen us. Goes forwards, under fire. Poor Stug wasn't actually AFK at all. Just stuck down in a dip. Fortunate for me. And that is how we manage to get closer towards the Japanese tank destroyers with the Chihi winning a one versus four scenario and just proving to me what an absolute monster little seal clubber this is. Now, once again, it's not going to win its engagements with super high alpha damage. It's not like a, a Hetzer within that regard. And it's not going to win its engagements by just having super armor that its opponents can't deal with. That's what you want a Matilda for. However, this thing, with its outrageous gun depression and outrageous damage per minute, is very proficient at overpowering its opponents. And it has that kind of old school feel of where if you catch someone at low tier, that you can destroy them quick enough that they don't have an opportunity to retaliate. And that was oh so much more common back in the day when all of the tanks had massively less hit points, but the same damage per minute. It was a real good move by Wargaming back in the day to increase the hit points at low tier because it gives players an opportunity to make a mistake and not get out of the game and be able to fight back. Well, at least unless they're playing against a, a derp gun that's usually firing HE against weakly armored targets or even if people are paying to fire heat. However, to have this much damage per minute, it doesn't matter if their hit points have been buffed. This thing's picking them apart in a matter of seconds. And so once again, a reminder to all of you that if you want to be able to get the new Japanese tank destroyers, which are rumoured to be coming out on the 19th of April, because in one of Wargaming's articles they published that's the date the onslaught starts, then uncheck Accelerated Crew Training and save yourself 13,550 experience to be able to get the Honey 3 on day one. And after boosting this mammoth 1,230 base experience, I, I pretty much got half of the way there in a single game. This was an ace tanker, unsurprisingly, for destroying just under half of the enemy team and dealing the kind of damage that would make a tier 9 or tier 10 tank at least feel a little happy. But I have to admit, I fired a lot of gold ammunition, but even without the uh, event reward of 50k, I would have still made a 3,000 credits profit here. And a commiserations to Shinkion on the enemy team, who did also pick up a top gun, but they weren't the biggest top gun in this battle. Although, again, I do feel a little bit filthy whenever I drop down to tier 4. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video, especially all of the, those of you out there who are constantly asking me to play Tech Tree Tanks that are below tier 8. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase later on today on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And this week, I'm going to be playing through to the Rinocerante, which is currently top of the tree. And hopefully I can show you why the Italian tank heavy tanks are very underrated. So looking forward to seeing you all live. And as always, firstly, actually, happy Easter to all of you out there. Have a wonderful day with your friends family and if you get bored of them then come say hi on twitch and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon